and more clear to deal with stuff. Cost-benefit analysis. Look at when you need to make decisions and learn how to determine whether or not that's a right decision or a wrong decision. And with a cost-benefit analysis, you really need to learn objective ways to determine whether it's a cost or a benefit. And the word objective basically means that if I saw the list or anyone in this room saw the list, no one could disagree that that would be a cost or that would be a benefit. If we see a chocolate bar, you know, we can easily say it will affect our body in a negative stress pattern. And all the research is quite clear from that. All of us would agree. Now, emotionally, he might put it into a benefit. Okay? But that's subjective. And is it really yummy if it's taking years off your life because it's a rock in your backpack and it's making you sink faster? See, we... Huh? <laughs> you know... Oh, you know, my, my six-year-old son says it best. No, I don't want to eat that. It takes a month off my life. He really understood. <laughs> and I know that seems really harsh, but that's the truth. Because if, it, if it's not, then all the research must be wrong too. That's where you've got to start. It is. You've got to start. Because what, what, what's my, what are my children going to grow up? Are they going to grow up to be like the world? Or have I got the biggest influence over them and they're going to grow up like what I do? If your children aren't seeing you doing any exercise... Your children are not going to do any exercise. Now, sometimes they will take it upon themselves to make that change. But your children will do what you do. This, the research is quite scary. If one adult in a house is ob obese, there's, I think, a 50% chance that one of your children will be obese too. If both parents are obese, it's nearly close to 100% that the child will be obese now. It's a scary thing. Your actions have consequences, and sometimes the consequences aren't for you directly. And so when we're thinking about food and diet, it's the biggest cause of stress to the body. The Western society is committing, themselves, uh, you know, committing suicide at a rate of 80% of our population on a daily basis. We didn't lose that many in the plagues. You know? It, it's a hard thing. And so it might seem like I, I brainwashed my kid you know, to say it takes a month of my life. And yeah, maybe it's a little bit drastic. But at the same time, he really understands the backpack that every stressor is a thing. Okay, doesn't mean we, we don't indulge occasionally, but it's not on a nightly basis. It's not on, even on a weekly basis, you know? <laughs> <laughs> Actions have consequences. Now, if you're happy to accept the consequence, then that's fine. Meditation is another cool one, just taking time to chill, to breathe, relax. Now, you're going to get a lot of words coming at you, a lot of things. No, you can either deal with them there, which could take a while, or just say, no, this is just chill, breathing, relaxed time. Okay? Next day, planning, to-do list. That's one of the best things that will get you structured. Now, what's the, most, what's the one thing we hate the most in the day-to-day -day things? The thing we like to do or the thing we just go, oh, do I have to do that? Okay? We all hate to do those things. But I'm going to tell you, if you do a to-do list and put them at the top of your list so you get them done first, how is that going to make you feel, that the fact that you did it? And don't stop, or sorry, don't start the next item on that list until that thing is completed. And I'm going to tell you, you're going to feel an awful oh, empowerment. And the, the cool thing is everything else on that list is just going to be a breeze. Structure is really important. Our, our, our body, our brain likes structures. It likes repetition. It likes things that are done in structures. Especially in terms of talk, the English that came in the next hmm. Hmm. We'll talk about that a little bit then in the end. Um, nutrition, I've already touched that a fair bit. If you feed yourself junk, your body's going to feel like junk. If you are consuming foods that are going to harm your body, your body's not going to have the same zest and vitality than if you consume good things. Now, as a human being, we know what's good for us. Because you know that a salad's good for you. You know that an apple's good for you. You know that a handful of nuts is good for you. You know you shouldn't be eating that processed food in bags of chips or cereals and those kind of stuff. They're things that we know intuitively. The problem is, we think we're above them. We think, no, that, it's okay. What's a few extra key, you know, things on the hip? It's not going to kill me right now. And that's the biggest problem we have. It might not kill you right now, but it might actually mean that you're not living the quality of life that you could have because it, 
a chocolate bar will give you that dopamine, but afterwards you go, mm. and when you feel, mm, you're feeling stress, it will create an emotional stress in the body, which responds the exact same whether or not your boss was yelling at you all day. Okay? Change your state of exercises. Okay? If you are currently letting the dog walk you, okay, you're not fit enough. Okay? You need to be able to keep up roughly with your dog. If you're not doing 30 minutes of physical exercise on a daily basis, you're not doing enough. And don't tell me you don't have enough time because you're going to learn next month how to get the time. We all have the time. Because if it's a priority to us, you will make the time. Because there are things you're doing right now that are harming you that you could replace with things that would be good for you. Hour of power is a cool thing. 20 minutes of meditation, 20 minutes of exercise, 20 minutes of reading or visualization. Okay? When you do meditation, you calm the body down. Exercise, get the body pumped. Okay? Visualization, see how your day is going to go. See the challenging and how you're going to overcome it. How are you going to make sure that that stressful event that you have to attend to? See yourself completing it as it being successfully completed. Okay? Should they be done in a sort of order? What? I generally will do my hour of power in the morning. <coughs> Think about nutrition during the day. Mm. I do my journaling and next day planning, obviously, at nine. At nine. But together with the end day recap sort of thing. But at the same time, you could do the to-do list first thing in the morning. But it really doesn't matter as long as it's being done I, at some I point. I meant more like at the hour, in the hour of power, the 20 yeah. minute. No, no. But if you think about it, um, if you have just done exercise yeah. and you're going to do your meditation, you think that's going to be a pleasant... Yeah, I think no. that's what, yeah. yeah. So meditation is your calm, okay? Yeah, you might want to do your right. visualization after the meditation mm. so that when you're going on your run, it's still going through your brain, mm. okay? But because when you've just been exercising, you're doing your visualization, you're going to be more awake, more focused, more energetic. So you, I generally find my visualization or thinking about the day and so forth is much more effective, okay? Like I said, it's not a complete list. The one thing you just need to know is that there is stress in your life, which you all know. Most of you are letting the stress happen to you. As uh, I think it was said on the weekend as well at the seminar, there are three types of people. People that let things happen to them. People that make things happen. And the last one is people that have regrets. Because... You know, if you're letting things happen, at least you're there, you're part of it. If you're making things happen, you're there controlling your life. If you've got regrets, it means you weren't doing anything. You just, you know. When you have stress in your life, the best way to manage it is to hit it head on. And the best way to do that is to put your strategies in place. There are certain things that you know will trigger stress in your body. And because you know them, you can either keep letting them happen to you, or make action steps that will walk around that. You will have bills that are coming at you and you might need to do a recap at the end of the day and, or a cost-benefit analysis. Is that Foxtel really necessary? Okay. Is that bill really necessary? Was it a luxury or was it an essential? Do I need to buy that carton of beer every week? You know, hitting the nutrition bit again. Do I need that? Do I need this? Most of the stress we have in our life is on money. Okay? Most of the time, obviously, because to a large degree, we want more. But the most of the time that we want them, it's just to get our quick dopamine hit. And afterwards, you just go, okay, done. We've got to look for things that will keep that dopamine flowing. Find stuff that you're passionate about, things that you're enjoying. Okay? And the biggest one that you need to work out how to enjoy is your job because you're going to spend most of your life there.